All right, here we are for the inaugural film room with offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes. Jeff, thanks for taking a couple minutes. Glad to be here. How do you feel like the progression has gone so far? I think we're heading in the right direction. Certainly not where, um, where we need to be. People ask all the time uh, at this point in the season, are you ready for the game? And, and I think mentally and emotionally we are. But as a coach, you always wish you had more time. So we'll use all the days we have left to continue preparing right up in, until uh, next Thursday. Okay, let's talk about some plays from last year, uh, a variety of plays, and we'll start with the special teams play against uh, Wisconsin that went for a touchdown. Yeah, so we, uh, we don't call these trick plays, we call them specials. We think they're just another play in our playbook and we expect to execute them the same as any other. And so this one started with a shift that's really just there for window dressing and to uh, disguise the formation a little bit. We moved our tight ends, moved Lupini, our tailback out, and then just before the snap, we bring some jet motion again, looking just to uh, make the defense adjust to some things. Once we saw the defense react like this, um, we all felt pretty confident that, that it was going to work. That's a pretty good throw, too. It was, yeah. We, we're fortunate. <laughs> we got a couple of receivers who can throw. Okay, Western Michigan game, a touchdown pass uh, to Dylan Colley. So this was a fairly standard play in our offense, um, a downhill run lined up in the pistol on this particular play we're in 11 personnel so we've got three wide outs and a tight end and a back and we have the ability to hand the ball off right here if the defense plays um, soft coverage if the defense plays aggressively which obviously they are right here they're in a seven man box plus they're bringing one off the edge playing cover zero then we've got throws out here that we can make to either of these two running a two-man concept or over here and obviously when you get inside leverage one-on-one -on -one coverage with a receiver down there in the red zone you like that matchup looked like zach's eyes are in the right spot too he's looking at dylan it almost looks like right yeah he's well he's he's he already knows from this alignment that they're at least playing cover one, which would mean we're outnumbered in the box and probably zero based on the field safety. And so he already knows where he's really going with the ball. He's just giving a token fake to draw those defenders up in there a little bit further. But he knew before the ball was snapped where he was going with the ball. And another really nice throw to Dylan on the other. Yeah, he, he's, um, he's incredibly accurate and more so now than he was last year. Okay, New Mexico State, Dallin Holker over the middle. Yeah, so this is a fairly standard uh, play-action pass in our offense and a lot of offenses. It's a, it's a great play that, that matches with a lot of the fly sweeps that we like and a lot of people like. Um, and so fly sweep, fake from the boundary to the field, and they play single high coverage. And so you've got a post being run by the play side receiver. You've got an over coming by our backside tight end, the front side tight end and back are in max protection. And so really you have three options on this pass. You get the take post, the over, or the check down to the guy who actually ran the jet. And most often when a defense plays single high, middle closed, this pass is the one that you're gonna have open, particularly if you do a good enough job selling the linebackers. And as you see, we did right here, the jet fake gets the defense to react a little bit. Then you get the run fake to get them to pull down, opens up Dallin over the middle here. One of the keys to beating Wisconsin was matching their physicality in the run game. And this next play showed that with Squally Canada. We had a great game. Yeah, I, I, I think we, um, I think Kalani did a great job preparing our entire team to go in and, and play a physical game. And we knew we were gonna be in for a fight. Um, this play again works off the jet sweep and so we've got a sweep fake coming to the boundary here and we've got uh, what we call one of our wide plays running to the field and so there are different ways that defense adjust defenses adjust to fly sweep and one of those is to spin the safeties some people call it rock and roll the safeties so he rocks down he rolls back and so you'll get that sort of uh, coverage often and, and it helps us in terms of uh, knowing going into every game how we want to do that. Now what was done up here at the line of scrimmage, you can do all that stuff you want, but if you don't handle the line of scrimmage, then none of that stuff matters. And so Moroni is doing a great job right here. We call this a two-phase block where he's stepping inside. This guy's two-gapping him, this defensive end, so he's going to go wherever Moroni goes. So as Moroni steps in, he follows him in and then he seals him inside, which is just what we want. 
Um, with these plays, we need athletic linemen who can, who can run and block in space. So we've got Keanu and James out here pulling to block the linebackers and the, the jet sweep fake right here holds the backside just enough to give us a clean running lane on the front side. And then Squally does a great job making the safety miss and getting a big run. What role does that jet sweep play in softening up a defense? Um, I think it can play a large role, and, and offenses have different ways to impact second and third level defenders, and at times even the line of scrimmage. Um, but for us, I've found it as good as anything at creating misdirection. Um, but in order to do that, in order to have, I'll go back and show one thing, in order to have true misdirection, then you have to have people who are willing to do a great job selling it. So you see our sweep fake right here. A lot of, a lot of teams, you'll see them just kind of halfway fake that and then they kind of jog off the screen or they get about here to the offensive tackle and they turn and start looking back at the run and this is something that we take a lot of pride in is our action um, in the jet sweep game and so if we're giving it on the sweep then we expect the quarterback and the tailback to do a phenomenal job selling that we're running the other way that's their block for the play this is his block for the play so the the misdirection and deception that you can create is is really good I think. And Gunnar Romney, a guy who wasn't fully healthy last year, but when he was, uh, had some nice plays against a touchdown catch against Hawaii. Yeah, I think we certainly saw glimpses of Gunnar's potential, and I expect to see a lot more of that this year. This is a double move. A lot of people call this a sluggo, a slant and go route. And so we certainly had um, our mind to go here, but we've also got three other receivers who are doing a great job running their route making sure that um, if the quarterback needs to go there, he's got other options. So Gunner did a great job right here setting it up. One, two, three, two steps to the slant, makes it look just like he's gonna break inside on the slant right here, gets the corner to turn his hips, and then breaks off his backside hip. And again, Zach did a great job putting it right on him. Um, as is always the case in any pass, you gotta do a good job in protection and. We had really good protection right there that gave Zach the time that he needed to make the accurate throw. Will you describe to me what Zach Wilson is looking at and assessing pre-snap generally? It depends on the concept, but one of the, one of the main things is, is the middle of the field open or closed. And so that's a, that's a term that a lot of people use and, and all coverages are either gonna be open or closed. And so an open Maybe. middle field, an open middle field means that the field is split. There's no deep safety in the middle of the field. So coverage is typically split, cover two, cover four, or zero coverage, all out blitz. And then middle of the field closed means there's a free safety somewhere in the middle of the field and may not look like that pre-snap, but post-snap, like we talked about earlier on the Wisconsin clip, um, post snap, is there a safety in the middle of the field? That changes his, his, his read certainly. And then obviously once we determine if it's middle of the field close, is it man or is it three? And then uh, certain throws, it's, it's a more standard progression read where he's going one, two to three. Uh, certain throws, he just needs to know, is it man or zone? So it really depends on the concept, but that middle of the field open or close is something that, um, that A-Rod does a great job of helping him recognize. And let's finish with this. Uh, on media day, there was a moment where for 25 seconds, you stared into the ether, very focused. What was more focused, you in that moment or the BYU offense going into this season? Are you doing it again? I didn't notice. Was I doing it again? I've mastered the art of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the human eye. I have no idea what I was thinking about at that moment, but I know our offense is, uh, is really focused on this game and looking forward to it. Well, I really appreciate the time. Great stuff, and uh, best of luck against Utah. All right, you bet. Go Cougs.